storytelling traditions are passed down from generation to generation all over the world, connecting people to their cultures and ancestors. Inuit mythology refers to the indigenous peoples of Alaska, Canada, and Greenland's shared spiritual beliefs and practices. Their religion has many parallels with the religions of other North Polar peoples. The Inuit were fascinated by the Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights, and some believed that ancestors' faces could be seen dancing within the swirling colors of the lights, while others thought the lights were more dangerous in nature. Others saw them as hunting guides, healers, animal souls, or giant representations. Shamans are used by Inuit villages to interpret spiritual mysteries. These shamans, known as Angakuk, are also psychologists, healers, and fortune tellers. Animism and shamanism are traditional Inuit religious practices, in which spiritual healers mediate with spirits. The importance of traditional stories in Inuit culture cannot be overstated however, many of these stories are not being passed down in the Arctic, and are at risk of being lost. Inuit elders' stories are full of fantastic creatures, spirits, and strange beings. The Inuit believe that all living things possessed powerful spirits, and that the spirits of animals were equal to those of humans. As a result, the Inuit believe that if the spirit of an animal killed in the hunt was not properly respected, its spirit would be able to avenge its death. In this section, we'll look at a few characters from their rich northern culture, on this chapter called, Inuit Mythology. The Kalapaluk is an Inuit folkloric mythical creature known as the Child Snatcher. The Kalapaluk, like the Boogeyman, is said to kidnap misbehaving children. Nobody knows why these creatures are so fond of kidnapping. Perhaps they take children because they're lonely, and enjoy the company, or perhaps they enjoy the taste of children. These are arctic marine creatures which are frequently described as having elongated fingernails and green scaly and bumpy skin, similar to that of a scalpin. These repulsive creatures are said to reek of sulfur. Many stories about the Kalapiluk depict them wearing eider duck clothing, and carrying large pouches on their backs to transport children. The Kalapiluk lurks in the sea, waiting for children to play alone on the beach or near the icebergs. Typically, Kalapiluk leap out of the water and grab children without warning. However, you can sometimes hear them knocking on the ice. Some elders believe that if the ocean becomes wavy in a particular area, or if steam begins to rise from the sea, a Kalapiluk may be hiding beneath the surface. One thing is certain. Whether there is a Kalapiluk in the water or not, it is never safe to play alone on the beach or near the broken pans of sea ice. The legend also serves a practical purpose in keeping children away from thin ice or bodies of water, which are said to be where the creatures live. In Inuit folklore, the Ajirak are shape-shifting creatures, who kidnap travelers and children and abandon them in remote and difficult to find locations. They are said to take on many animal forms, including wolves, bears, reindeer, ravens, and even humans. The only part of the Ajirak that cannot be concealed, are their piercing glowing red eyes, which are red in all of its forms, human and animal alike. They are a terrifying creature with a distinct human appearance. In their human form, they have sideways eyes and lips, which means they blink and close their mouth vertically rather than horizontally. Many stories portray these hidden creatures as evil and malicious. According to these stories, the Ijirak wait for lone travelers, changing shape to deceive and approach them. It can sometimes be helpful, or at other times fatally deceptive. Some elders argue that these land spirits are misunderstood rather than evil, and believe that they frequently appear to bring messages to travelers. Although there are numerous interpretations of the Ijirak, one thing appears to be certain. Following an encounter with the Ijirak, people tend to experience memory loss and quickly forget the details of what occurred. The Ijirak are believed to hunt throughout the Arctic region, however, Freeman's Cove is particularly notable as a location where many sightings have taken place. In Inuit beliefs, the Takriaxwit are also referred as the people of the shadows. These shadow people, are humans from a world beyond our own, that is imperceptible to us. Their semi-transparent bodies can not be seen straight on, but can be seen with the corner of the eye. They are extremely shy, and when they are noticed, they often disappear into their own world. In a silent room, more often than not, the sound of their footsteps, laughter, or conversation can be heard. The Takriaks would only become visible when they are killed, as discovered by the story of an Inuit woman, who became insane after marrying one, and stabbed him, sealing his body into our tangible world. While this story mentions a Takriaxwit living among the Inuit people, it is more common for the shadow people to invite someone to permanently enter their shadow realm. They thrive in complete darkness, and even the slightest hint of light is painful to them. Except on moonless nights, they are rarely found on the surface. They are particularly widespread beneath polar countries, where they are drawn to the eternal night of an arctic winter. Takriaxwit are said to be omnivorous, eating the same foods as humans do, though their diet is heavier on fungus and vermin that thrive underground. These creatures are completely black, 
and featureless, except for their white staring eyes, and a thin slit of a mouth. The story of Sedna's transformation into a sea spirit is told throughout the Arctic in various ways, however, in all versions, a young woman is transformed into the mother of all sea creatures, this is one of her many stories, a young woman named Sedna, lived and was raised in the Arctic by her mother and father, many Inuit men wanted Sedna as a wife, and asked her parents for permission to marry her, but Sedna turned them all down, until an Inuk came to see Sedna and she accepted his marriage proposal, when they were alone on the island where they lived, this man revealed to her that he was not a man at all, but a bird disguised as a man, Sedna was furious, but she was trapped, and had no choice but to make the best of her situation, they shared a home on the island for a while, until Sedna's father decided to pay them a visit, when he saw how unhappy his daughter was, and how her husband had lied to her, he killed the birdman, Sedna and her father boarded her father's kayak and set out on their journey home, when the birdman's friends discovered what they had done, they were determined to avenge his death, they flew above the kayak, causing a massive storm by the furious flapping of their wings, the small kayak was tossed around by the waves, making it difficult to keep upright, Sedna's father was afraid that the storm would fill his kayak with water, causing him to drown in the icy waters, so he threw Sedna overboard, he expected the birds to stop flapping their wings as a result of this, but it didn't work, Sedna didn't want to be left in the water, so she clutched the side of her father's boat, fearing for her life, fearful that she would topple him, the father severed her fingers one by one and watched her sink to the ocean floor, various sea creatures emerged from each of her finger joints, transforming them into fish, seals, walruses, and whales, after sinking to the ocean's depths, Sedna became a powerful spirit and the ruler of all sea creatures, because Sedna has complete control over all of the animals in the Arctic Sea, the Inuit who rely on these animals for survival want to maintain a good relationship with Sedna, so that she can continue allowing her animals to be hunted, certain taboos must be followed by Inuit, in order to keep Sedna happy, one of these states, that after a seal is killed, it should be given a drink of fresh water rather than salt water, if the hunters don't catch anything for a long time, the shaman will transform into a fish, he or she will descend to the ocean's depths in this new form, to appease Sedna, the shaman will comb the tangles out of Sedna's hair, and braid it, bringing her joy and calming her anger, Sedna enjoys having her hair combed and braided by someone else, since she has lost all of her fingers, when she is satisfied, she lets her animals be hunted, and they are willing to give up their lives to provide food, clothing, and shelter for the Inuit. The Amarok wolf is a mythical creature, that hunts alone rather than in a pack unlike other wolves. Many Inuit legends portray it to be a positive and negative omnipotent presence. The Amarok wolf's abilities are said to be proportional to its size, and has incredible strength and is a fearsome foe, due to its massive form. It is also a skilled hunter, with extremely acute senses, that allow it to stalk unsuspecting humans at night. It is said that it stalks humans who are foolish enough to go hunting alone in the middle of the night, and it hunts and punishes them. It has a commanding presence and is thought to be a massive wolf with razor-sharp teeth, and exceptional predatory instincts. The Amarok legend is said to have originated from old Eskimo stories about the now extinct dire wolf. According to one Inuit legend, a young boy who lacked strength and was shunned by his people, prayed to the northern spirits for extra strength, the Amarok came to the boy's aid, and wrestled with him on a daily basis to help him gain strength, when the boy grew strong enough, he wrestled and defeated three bears, earning him widespread adoration and respect among his people, in another story, a man who is mourning the death of a relative hears that the Amarok is nearby, and he and another relative go in search of the great wolf, instead, they find her pups, and the mourner slaughters them all, which frightens the mourner's relative, who advises the two to flee and hide in a nearby cave, while they were hiding, one of them decided to look around and noticed the Amarok returning to her pups with a reindeer in her mouth, when the Amarok is unable to locate her offspring, she rushes to a nearby lake and drags a humanoid form into the water, at which point, the mourner collapses, the mourner's soul was taken from his body by the Amarok, from which nothing remains concealed, Nanook, according to Inuit beliefs, was considered to be the master of bears, and the bringer of good or bad luck during a hunt. The Inuit hunters worshipped this great bear, not only because they believed he decided whether or not they would have a successful hunt, but also because he would punish those who would not pay proper respect to the bears they hunted and killed. Nanook, was revered by the Inuit as a powerful and mighty being, who was considered to be, almost man, 
Nanook was honored by the hunter by hanging a bear's hide in a special section of his igloo, for several days. They would also offer the bear's spirit weapons, and other hunting tools if it was a male, and needle cases, scrapers, and knives if it was a female. Native people believed that polar bears allowed themselves to be slaughtered in order for their souls to obtain such tools, known as tadkoit, which they would carry with them into the afterlife. According to legend, if a polar bear is properly treated by the hunter after its death, its spirit will spread the good news to other bears, making them eager to be killed by the same hunter. On the other hand, bears would avoid hunters who did not pay respects to the bears which they hunted and killed. In the past, and perhaps still to this day, the Inuit ate polar bear meat, and used the fur to make warm trousers and kamiks, which are soft boots, for the men, women and children of their tribe.